I would now like to welcome the director of the department, the Fairfax County Department of Transportation, Mr. Tom Bishadney, to make some brief opening remarks. Tom. And thank you to all of you who are participating this afternoon. We appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us today. Um, we really do um, respect the fact that uh, we can develop um, bus service plans, but we really need the input from the community and, and the users to for perfect those plans and make sure that they're meeting the needs of the community. So your input is very important. And so we are looking forward to hearing from you at the end of the presentation with your comments and suggestions. Uh, we've had a couple of rounds of feedback, and Michael will talk about that in a minute. Um, but and, and at this point, we are at uh, preparing our final recommendations. But before we do submit anything to the Board of Supervisors, we want to hear from you uh, one more time. So again, thank you for participating. I'm going to turn it over to Michael Falchow, who is with our Transit Service Division, and he is going to run through the presentation. Michael? Well, thank you very much, Tom. Once again, I'm Michael Falchow. I also have another team member with me, Heijun Kang, who um, will help me answer questions as we move along. So I'm going to go through the PowerPoint presentation. The first part is um, what have we done to date? What is our planning process? We started back in 2000, late 2018, understanding what the issues are, evaluating our system, understanding on um, the ups and downs of our system. We had a set of public meetings uh, later part of um, 2018, early 2019 uh, with an online presence. And then we took all the information that we had gotten to that point and we evaluated our system and we developed three alternatives. And these alternatives were to give people a preference. Would they like faster buses or more coverage? What is exactly this? Some sort of a sensitivity test. We brought that out to the public. We got a lot of feedback and a lot of input. Based on our evaluation of those alternatives and the public input, we are able to develop a preferred service plan, which is what we're going to talk about today. And the big blue arrow, arrow on the screen, if you can see it, is um, where we are today. We're starting our public outreach, uh, our third round of public outreach. And once we take, take your input, we'll make the tweaks that we need to make, make the adjustments to try to uh, make the service better, this plan will then be used as part of the foundation of a larger plan, which is our transit development plan, which we do every five years and has a 10 year horizon. And that plan is being is actually in the beginning phases right now and will most likely have its first round of public meetings in December. And that will, will go to the board. Um, it will go through several public meeting processes and then it will go to the board in the later half of next year. And then at that point, we can start with implementation. So let me move on to some of the things that we, um, some of the outreach efforts that we've had. The marketing team of um, Fairfax County Department of Transportation did a market survey, um, got about 2,600 respondents. This was countywide and pretty much focused on why people don't ride transit. And those people who used to ride transit, why did they stop? We need to get an understanding of what they need in order to want to use the transit system. We also wanted to talk to the people who are actually using the transit system, and that's what the onboard survey was last summer. We went did the entire system, 2,500 respondents, and we got basic information. Why are they using transit? Where are they going to you know, their origin and destination? Some demographic information, and what would they need um, for future service? As we mentioned uh, a couple of times already, we had uh, several rounds of um, public meetings before, along with online pre a presence, an online survey, received about 1,300 respondents so far. And that was a lot. All this information that we received from these three areas was taken, evaluated, and assessed onto the system. So the, the four areas that we really heard comments on were activity, faster travel, greater span of service, and increased frequency. For each one of these, we attempted to try to identify a way that we can meet that using the, the three alternatives, which I'll talk about in a moment. For um, connectivity, we try to realign our routes to meet 
um, how people, where they're trying to get to and from. Faster travel, we reduce unnecessary um, travel patterns of a route, maybe a realigning the route a little bit. So greater span of service and frequency, that's what we used um, our demand. Where are people living? Where are they getting on the buses? Where are they getting off the buses? And try to shift our resources to match the demand. As I mentioned, there were three alternatives. The first alternative was an existing service plan with some adjustments. Take the existing plan, make some modifications, try to take some of the things that are already in the existing transit development plan that was approved by the board in 2016 and see if we could um, readjust our plan. The second alternative was a streamline. Try to make the routes go as fast as possible from point A to point B. And the third alternative was let's start all new piece of paper, get a new map, get a new marker, and draw all new routes. Can we make the system better than what we have today? And these all three alternatives were done with the same budget, basically the same resources that we have today. So no alternative would give an advantage over another alternative. The preferred plan, which I'll talk about in a moment, actually takes elements of all three of these based on public input and our evaluation. So you'll see that in a moment. So we evaluated these, these alternatives based on several categories. And three of the categories are here. One we call facilities. And this is coverage. This is where people are trying to go to, whether it's a hospital, major activity center, metro rail center. And the second um, alternative, the second evaluation point was transit travel time. And this was looking at the key locations that we um, received from our online, our onboard survey and those top 10 origin and destination. And we plotted out how people could use the system, that, that alternative from point A to point B. And then transit ridership potential, that's basically where are people who use transit pretty much living right now. And that's a demographic analysis. Where are they trying, where are they coming from? And so what you have here is you have the three key elements, where are people coming from, how can they, how long will it take them to get from point A to point B and where they're going? And as you can see, alternative two and three were ranked very high in this while the existing and alternative one did not rank as well. Some of the other elements that we evaluated, and I've already mentioned um, some of these, uh, the uh, transit propensity is actually those uh, ridership potential. And that looked at low income housing, Households with one or zero vehicles, minority population, minority households, seniors, and disabled. These are these are people who have a limited choice of mobility. So we wanted to make sure that they have at least the best service that we could provide them within the budget that we have before we try to do anything else. The uh, average travel time I just mentioned that that's the analysis of origin and destination. And then on the far right you have key locations, which I just mentioned that so that those are the facilities. The two in the middle, which are frequ um, frequency factor and span of service factor, these are weights. We uh, scored each route and each alternative between a zero and a 2.5 for both of these based on their level of service that they provided. So if a route had very good um, frequency, which is how often the bus comes by and um, served a very large portion of the day and also every day of the week, it was scored very high, which when scored against the rest of the parameters, gave a higher score to that alternative. So some of the raw numbers that actually went into the alt alternative evaluation, you can see here the five, top five of which I've just mentioned, transit propensity, frequency, span of service, average travel time, and key locations. The first column is the existing, and then we have alternative one, two, and three for comparison, along with the preferred plan. Right now, we're really just looking at the existing versus the preferred plan because alternative one, two, and three were actually used as elements in the preferred plan. So the preferred plan does very well again in almost every one of these categories, as you can see when you compare the existing to the preferred. It went from 92,000 the trans propensity population to 102,000 plus, and higher, of course, is better. And then frequency factors, 0.92, to a 1.34, and then a span of service from a, a minor adjustment here, a minor improvement, but we also have a significant level of service already out there. 
and average travel time, as you can see, was a significant improvement. And we want a lower number here. So you went from 52 minutes to uh, 43 minutes on those average trips between those 10 top origin and destination points. That's not every single trip. That's just those major trips. And then key locations, there was some improvement there between 83 locations to 90 locations. So originally, Alternative 3, as I sh showed you in the last few slides, Alternative 3 scored very, very high on a quantitative approach. But we took a little, another deeper look at it, and this is the bus stop coverage. Only about 70% of the bus stops we presently have out there today were be covered by Alternative 3. We said that's not good enough. So we looked at Alternative 2 as our back, as our, our base, and started moving elements of the other two alternatives and, value, and adjusting alternative two. So we end up with the preferred plan with only about 3% of those bus stops not being covered. Now, some of those bus stops are being covered by other routes in other parts of the county um, because there's some overlap of some routes. Um, the remaining is what we're looking at right now to see how we can modify. So there's still some little bit of work left to do. So what is the preferred plan? Well, as I mentioned, it's all it's elements of all three alternatives in a small improvement in an increased span of service. It's more direct, shorter travel times, increase our increase our ridership, or increase our access to transit density population, transit dependent populations, maintain, try to maintain as much of our bus stop coverage as we can, as I just mentioned, new connections to GM uh, George Mason University, and that also connects up to the government center and the Fair Oaks Mall. We also maintain our access to the middle schools and high schools that we presently serve on these routes in this area portion of the county. This is all done in a budget neutral environment, so there's no additional operational costs on an annual basis, but there would be a capital cost impact of about $4.6 million because of the shift in resources between off-peak and peak times. Um, the peak time is typically your, your major uh, travel time during the day. And we'll talk a little bit how we um, anticipate and covering that in a moment. So I first wanted to talk about some of the benefits of this uh, preferred plan through the fast facts. So you can see on the first first line up here, uh, the first box, the average travel time, which I've mentioned several times, there's an improvement, and that's a 17% improvement between the existing and the preferred. When we move to the middle box, the population and household served within a quarter mile of the system. And you can see the existing population is about 200,000. We were able to make a 12% improvement and bring that up to almost 224,000. Minority population saw a 9% improvement. My households saw an 11% improvement. And low income households saw an 11, another 11% improvement. So it's good to have access. To, um, to have as many people have access to the transit system as possible, but it's also, also important about mobility. How often does that bus come by? You only have service at every 60 minutes or so, and you miss it, well, you're gonna have a tough time trying to get to that appointment or job or school or wherever you're trying to get to. So that's why the bottom table here is so important. It actually looks at during those peak hours, how many people have service that's better than 20 minutes, so how often that bus comes by. So as you can see here, our existing service has about a population of about 44,000 people within this area has service better than 20 minutes and about 87,000 for jobs. With the, this preferred plan, we're able to improve that to 116,000 for population and 138,000 for jobs. That's a, that for population, that's 164% improvement and for jobs at 60% improvement. So that means more people will have more access to transit than they presently have today, today within the existing budget. With every transit system, you wanna create a set of parameters. How, where are your um, peak hours? How are you going to operate? So we just wanted to set up some of the ground rules of how we develop some of our, our services. So the weekdays, we wanted to make sure that our peak hours operated between hours of nine, uh, five o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock in the morning, and afternoon from three to seven. Now this shifts back and forth depending upon the demand of that route. 
And then, of course, uh, peak frequency between 15 and 30 minutes and off peak between 20 and 60 minutes, depending upon demand. And then the weekend service, we want to make sure most routes are operating between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. with a frequency between 20 and 60 minutes. Once again, this all depends upon demand of the service. So the next few slides are going to be the, what we call the route profiles or sample route sheets. You'll find these online. If you go online, you'll see you can pull each one of these down and take a look at it and see how is my route changing? What are the benefits of the service plan to me? So some of the things you'll see on these route profiles are maps, how often it operates in terms of uh, the days of service, the hours of the service, how frequently it operates within those hours, and the loca major locations that it does serve, like schools, hospitals, major um, metro rail stations, and what other routes can you transfer to? Not just our routes, but also um, the metro rail routes, and maybe and also other Vermont bus routes. And the link that you can go get this on is uh, fairfaxcounty.gov transportation Frank Franconia Springfield optimization. You go to that website and you will see this um, on our website. You can go there and you get this information for yourself. So a little bit about, I have a few of the slides. I don't have all the, um, the route profiles. There's over 20 of them. So I'm gonna go over a few of them to highlight some key things. Uh, route 310 is one of our best routes in the uh, system in the Franconia area carrying over 1,600 passengers before uh, the health crisis. So it is a key route connecting from uh, Huntington over to Franconia, all the way out to the west, and that goes out to the Rolling Road Park and Ride lot. It's a cross-county east-west service operating most of the day between 4 a.m. and midnight. Uh, 20 minute service during peak and 35 minutes off peak on weekdays and Saturdays and Sundays between 35 and 60 minutes. So you can see that this service is very crucial to the, um, the system. It has a lot of demand. It has a lot of demand and we anticipate additional demand as it goes forward. Route 313 is a brand new route. So as we adjusted and optimized our, our existing routes, we found that we have enough resources to put a new route in. This route actually comes out of the existing transit development plan. Route 313 would connect from Franconia up to the Rolling Road area and um, connect to some of our um, the VRE and the 495, all the way up to George Mason, to the um, George Mason area and Fairfax, uh, Fairfax area onto the government center to uh, Fair Oaks Mall, where at that point it will, it, can link, it will link up to our Route 605 and people can go all the way up to um, not only Nova Hospital, but also to, to Reston. So with just two, with one transfer, you can get from Franconia all the way to Reston instead of taking three or four buses or two or three buses and two or three trains to get there. So we, we're hoping that this route is very successful in cutting down travel time for the average person who needs to go in those directions. Now, Routes 371 is actually a combination of three routes, Route 371, 372, 373. These two routes pretty much cover the same area, slightly different times of day, slightly different route alignments. You combine them all together, operate it all day long from 4.30 in the morning to, to midnight, at um, 15 minute frequencies during peak and 30 minutes during the off peak. So the next slide is um, Route uh, 395. We wanted to mention that a lot of our um, riders use our express routes to the Pentagon. We want to mention that these routes have not changed that much. We try to maintain levels of service on these routes. For example, um, this route goes from um, park and ride lots. Uh, up to uh, the Pentagon and 15 minute frequencies during peak hours. And route um, 393, 394, and 396 are all still in the plan and all still have um, very much the same level of service. Route 400X is also a brand new route. Um, this is an overlay route and it's a limited express route that operates from Franconia all the way up to um, Tyson's, and it serves areas like the um, 
the Nova Hospital Campus, and on uh, Dunloring, along with Annandale. This route would have um, service at between 10 and 15 bus stops on the north and the south direction. It allows individuals to transfer from the 401, 402 mid, midway along the route and transfer over to the 400X, which will cut down their travel time by about between 25 and 33 minutes, depending on where they are on the route. And this is a, once again, a brand new route. It will operate during peak hour and operate 20 minute frequency. No service on the weekends. Uh, we were hoping that we could do a little bit more, but within our, com our, our confined fiscal constraints, we're unable to operate this um, greater than just the weekend, uh, just the uh, peak hours. So once this PowerPoint is uh, uploaded onto the, our website, you will see the next few slides and be able to look at it. These, these next few slides are a summary of all the information that you'll, you'll get as you look through the um, route profiles. So we just summarized some of the information. So you have a route number followed up by the next column, which is your uh, existing peak, what's out there today. And then what we, our recommendation is to be the uh, peak service, off peak service, and whether or not that uh, route will operate on weekends and then uh, weekend service, weekday service, excuse me, and a very short description of what type of improvement there is. I'll mention on Route 308 right here, um, that's a relatively new route. It's been out there for about a year, year and a half. No change to that route because before the uh, COVID pandemic, it was um, had very good ridership and it was increasing. Route 310 I've already talked about, 313 I've already talked about. Um, the other highlight I wanna show is Route 321, 322. This is this very crucial route within our system. It connects, um, Van Doring to uh, Franconia and major some very key neighborhoods along with some major employment areas. This route was operating roughly between 25 and 30 minute frequencies during the peak. By realigning our resources, we're able to get this route at 20 minute um, frequencies during the peak and 30 and off peak. So on this slide, I've already talked about um, Route 371. And I've already talked a little bit about the express routes to the Pentagon, 393, 394, 395, and 396. I've also mentioned uh, Route 400X. Now, I do want to mention that um, Route 335 is the top of the slide along with Route 341. We didn't change the alignments of these routes, but we did make some adjustments in terms of their frequency. In terms of 335, which goes down to Fort Belvoir from Franconia, we made up some adjustments to the frequency to get a better frequency. We went from about an average 28 minutes because the frequency was sometimes it was 30, sometimes it was 23, sometimes it was 20. We made it 15 minutes consistent across the board. And in the last slide, uh, Route 401, 402, which is our best route in the entire system, we combine these two routes together, we're going to maintain a 20 minute frequencies all day. Um, for peak and off peak, with the overlay of about 400x, um, you'll have effectively at certain of those 10 to 15 stops. Effectively, you'll have a uh, 10, 10 minute frequency. So we right size these based on the fact that we're adding an additional level of service. Now, Route 4, 494, that route originally went all the way down to Lorton, and then went all the way up to uh, Tyson's. We truncated that route to operate from Franconia to Tyson's on a 15 minute frequency. And we can interconnect it with Route 371. So an individual will be able to go, still be able to go from uh, the Lorton area all the way up to, to Tyson's, possibly even just on one bus, and, and be able to pick up that bus on a 15 minute frequency if we, what we call interline or interconnecting those routes together. Even if we don't, it would be a quick transfer between those two routes as these buses are operating on 15 minute frequencies during peak hour. So I did mention before that we have a, we had an, an increase in the number of uh, vehicles that uh, we would identified to implement this service, approximately eight vehicles. We are looking at Northern Virginia Transportation Commission uh, Community Choice Grant funding, which comes from the toll, toll revenues from I-395. 
we we're hoping to put a grant together that will look for either uh, capital and or operating funds to operate or assist us to improve them, the improvements on Route 371, 400X, and 494. So what's the next steps? The next steps at this point is to get input from you, whether at this meeting or online. Um, we will also show a slide of how you can give us your input beyond just this meeting. So um, we'll take all that input and we'll review every element, every uh, comment that we've got. We did a similar study up in uh, Reston Herndon. We got over 200 comments in the last round of our public process, and we looked at every single one of those comments. We plan to do the same thing. We may not be able to implement every single comment. We may be able to take that comment and put it into the transit development plan because we are dealing with a confined um, fiscal constraint plan. So not everything can be implemented um, at, at once. After we make our final adjustments to the preferred plan, we'll put that into the transit development plan, which will go to the board in the later half of next year. And at that time, if the board approves it, we can then start uh, service implementation. Now, any service change will once again go through a Title VI evaluation. That's a, a, another level of evaluation that we look at along with another set of public meetings onto the board for final approval. So there's two more levels of um, assessment and opportunity for the public to give input. So how to give us your feedback. Our feedback is going to be open until February, October, October 16th, 2020. You can give an online, online uh, survey, and that is at fairfaxcounty.gov transportation Franconia Springfield route optimization. You go to that website, you will find an online survey. You can select the route you want to give input on, answer one or two small, very quick questions, and then there's an open field that you can type in whatever comment you feel. And then there, you can also email us at fairfaxconnector at fairfaxcounty.gov. You can call us at 703-339-7200, or you can mail us directly at Fairfax County Department of Transportation, Transit Planning, Public Comment, 4050 Legato Road, Suite 400, um, Fairfax, Virginia, 22033. And with that, um, I believe I'll open it up to questions at this time. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, as Michael has stated, we would now like to open the meeting up for questions. Um, we do have one little note. Uh, the PowerPoint that Michael has presented to you this afternoon uh, is currently up on our website. So if you would like to have time to check it out for yourself, uh, it is available at our, on our website. Um, as to our questions, I just want to have a few reminders. Uh, please use the Q&A function to type your question for the moderators to read aloud. Uh, again, as a reminder, please do not use the chat feature to comment or ask questions. If you're currently uh, joining us by phone, please push star three to raise your hand to ask a question. When it is your turn, the moderator will call on you to ask your question. And after you have finished, please, please push star three again to lower your hand. I'll go into our questions. Uh, we have a few series of questions regarding the 341 route. Uh, perhaps you'd like to take these all as a package, Michael. Uh, the sure. first one, on the 341 bus line, the 316 departure from Fort Belvoir North area is being proposed to be eliminated. My experience as a rider is one of the busiest buses of the day and shouldn't be eliminated. Second question regarding the 341. How can we ensure flexible work schedules on the 341 line with absolutely no service between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m.? Less frequent service is acceptable, but no service isn't. And finally, the third question in the package, it says that 341 says improved frequency, but goes from 24 minutes to 30 minutes. And that isn't improved frequency. Okay, so these, these are all excellent questions. Um, 
I will start by saying that we actually met with the NGA transportation representative, I believe it was last week, um, because he called us about this plan and we wanted to make sure that they had a foundation understanding. We have an additional meeting that's set up for I think in a couple of weeks, look at uh, resolution to the lack of service and uh, the, the adjustments that are being proposed. Um, so we're gonna have a process that we're gonna go through to see what we can do. The midday service is actually one of our lowest routes in terms of performance before um, COVID. So we, we wanted to take a look at that and that was obviously eliminated because we wanted to use the resources to other areas, but there are other opportunities to look at to fill the gap. And so we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at how we can fill that gap and make sure we continue to make that linkage. Now to the actual time of Route 341, what we're gonna be doing there is we're gonna take that comment back. None of the schedules have actually been been um, developed yet. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna start developing schedules. And as we do that, we're gonna take that comment and take a look at how we can make those links. We also are going to try to make sure that we're linking up not only with our other routes that link to 341, but also to the VRE, because that's a, a crucial, um, about two years ago when we had a meeting with NGA, they talked a lot about uh, the VRE and linking to the VRE. So, that's what we will try to do um, with the route. It's a little difficult because the VRE doesn't actually function on a 30 minute frequency or 15 minute frequency. So it's a little hard to, to, to make that connection, but we try to make it as much as we can. So overall to the Route 341 and Route 340, we're taking another look at, that, at the, the, those pair of routes and taking a look at how to mitigate the um, proposal that we have today. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Our next question. Will the new route from Franconia Spring Metro to Fair Lakes go north on Rolling Road between Old Keene Mill Road and Braddock Road? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move. That's Route 313, I believe. Correct? Sure. I'm going to try to go to the map that we have here, and I am going to try to might be a way, there was a way that we could actually um, pull up the map a little closer. There should be a, a zoom a zoom in button on the left side, Michael. Um, button on the left side. I actually don't see that button. Oh, wait a minute, it's down here, it's down here. Thank you. Okay, not the greatest zoom in the world. So, hey, June, uh, if you're there, mm -hmm. and you have a better map. Um, <clears throat> could you uh, maybe respond to the question about the individual routes, roads that we're operating on? I know it's Old King Mill Road, and then it's up on to Zion Drive, up to uh, George Mason University, where then it hits, um, I believe that's, at US 50 and then 29 <clears throat> and then it's our on monument up, up in this area before it gets onto West West Ox and around the mall. So that's that's the general direction the route will operate. That's right. I think right now the proposed alignment for this route is going from Old King L Road and then to the Burke Center Parkway and then connects to the Roberts Road. So it's looks like it's not the, the Rolling Road Northern section we were talking about, but we will look at your comments and then see if there's any way and also evaluate the demand to for that section. So now if there's a better alignment that individuals want to look at, that's an opportunity for us to take another look at this route. So if there if a if a um, <clears throat> individual wants a different route structure, we're we're always open to the comment uh, of, of making some changes. 
Uh, sometimes it can become difficult to realign a route like this because it is a long route that if we um, do too much realignment, we actually lose our frequency of three, three minute frequency. The key thing between this route and many of the other routes is at the, I believe it's the uh, Rolling Valley Park and Ride lot. Um, from that point over to Franconia, it actually operates as a express, limited express route, because we already have Route 310 operating along the same roadway. So that will actually quicken, quicken up the travel time than anyone who picked up the bus um, further up the road, let's say over at the VRE or the uh, near um, Zion Road, or even trying to go southwards from George Mason, we'll be able to have a, a quicker trip from the uh, Rolling Valley Park and Ride lot all the way into Franconia. <clears throat> Thank you, Michael. Our next question, can you please describe the transition from the 231-232 route and partial re-substitution by 301, particularly noting that there is still no service between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. for people who have odd shifts uh, hours or need to re return home early? Because we're, we're talking about Route 301, not operating during off-peak times. It presently doesn't operate in the off-peak today. We can take a look at what we can do to make those uh, that extra link. There is also in new innovative transit operations in terms of flexible routes um, and, and uh, on-demand services. So while 301 typically had a um, a lower than average ridership. But presently, um, before the COVID, it was looking at about seven passengers per trip. Um, so it didn't justify adding more service to a route that actually doesn't have a lot of service on it right now. But we understand there are people who are don't all work. Um, you know, your nine to five job, there's retail jobs and hospital jobs. So if we're missing a certain population, that's what you're telling me. We're going to look at that. Maybe there's some innovative uh, transit services that we can take a look at. Maybe not right now, but into the future as we as we move into the transit development plan. Thank you, Mike. Uh, if any of our other attendees have any questions, please feel free to use the chat to uh, submit them now, and we would be happy to answer any questions for you. Uh, I would just like to check to see if we have any uh, questions coming through on our phone lines. Uh, no questions at this time, Vincent. Okay. Thanks. And, and we do want to stress that while you are here, uh, we do appreciate any feedback or comments that you may have for us uh, by you providing this comments and feedback to us as as a group. It will help make the service better for you in the future so that we know how it is that you need to travel and where we may be able to make adjustments. That's an important thing um, that you just mentioned, Vincent, is that I, I like to make sure that everyone understands that this is not um, cast in stone yet. There is still some flexibility that we can have. As I mentioned earlier in the PowerPoint presentation, this is not gonna happen next week or next month. It's going to take some time for all this to be implemented. And once we do get the possible funding for those additional vehicles, it could take anywhere between 18 months and 24 months or a little longer to implement this. We may implement this um, phased approach over several months or even years. So there's a lot of conversation that we can still do with the public to make sure what we implement is actually benefit you, the uh, user of the transit system. We also want to remind everyone that uh, the information that you have seen here today and that is being pre presented, uh, there's much more detail available. Uh, you can go online and take the survey. And so where Michael had previously referenced several route pages within his presentation. 
there's route profiles for all of the routes that are being uh, proposed in this preferred plan. So you can go in there and take a look and see what detail levels of some of the routes that may not have been discussed this afternoon. Now, I also wanted to mention and something I mentioned in uh, our Monday public meeting. A lot of people ask, you know, where do you get all this information from? We have an intelligent transportation system on all our buses. I like to call them smart buses. They know where they are on planet Earth. They know where they're going to. They have GPS and they also have um, automatic passenger counters. So we can count the number of people getting on the bus at every single bus stop throughout the day, every day of the week. So we know where people are getting on and off. We don't know who they are, but we know where they are um, and what time of day they're, they're, they're actually using the service. So when we looked at our data, and I mentioned it earlier um, about, you know, we evaluated our route, we, we decompiled every route and said, where is the service not doing as well? We also looked at our on-time performance by, by route and by section of route. Where is the route having difficulty maybe turning off into a neighborhood and coming back on and then having to take a left-hand turn. We looked at that information. So we, we looked at about 8 million points of data, basically, um, to take a look and see where we can make those improvements. Now, maybe not every improvement will be the best improvement for you individually, but there are you know, thousands of people that use the transit system. So your input will help us modify the plan to meet as many people's needs as possible. Uh, we do have another question. Why were the stops on the 321 and 322 along Indian Run Parkway eliminated? Uh, I think you're mentioning uh, something that we did about a year ago. Um, those were eliminated due to um, if I'm thinking about the right area that you're talking about, um, we eliminated that simply because um, it was a safety issue. There was parking on both sides of the street and the bus couldn't make it down the street anymore. So we had to reroute the bus so that we um, didn't, so the bus actually didn't hit other cars as it moved down there. So the bus was, in order to do that, the bus driver was driving really, really slowly and it's trying to get through the neighborhood. So we rerouted it due to safety issues. We are happy to answer any other questions. And just as a reminder, if you do have a question, uh, please enter your question into the Q&A function. Uh, this way that all the members of our panel are able to see the question and address it. <clears throat> Do we have any additional calling questions? Let me uh, talk a little bit why people might be typing something, a little bit about uh, the next steps in terms of evaluation. We're going to take all your input. And uh, what we've done with our other parts of our study as we do this throughout the entire county, this is we're not just doing it here, but we're doing it throughout the entire county. And it's a cyclical process. We'll do it again um, after we write the new transit development plan. We're going to start the whole route optimization process again. So we're going to come back after this in a few years and ask the same questions. Is it working? Is it not working? What can, how can we continue to improve? And I mentioned the intelligent transportation system that allows us to get constant input on what the route is doing. So we can go back and validate anything that we change and make sure that it actually is achieving what we hope that it would achieve. So that, that just tells you what we're next going to do is we're going to go through every single comment that we receive either in this meeting, the meeting we had on Monday, or from our online, our online presence. And we're going to evaluate each one. Now, I mentioned, I think I mentioned earlier, some comments we won't be able to do anything with because it's maybe adding more service than we have resources to do. That doesn't mean that that comment, um, we're just going to you know, put that aside. We're actually going to take that comment and say, here's something that maybe has value 
for the future. Maybe we can add more service on that route or add more service on that day. And that becomes part of our larger plan for the entire county. So no comment is going to be thrown away. All comments are going to be used, evaluated, and see how we can actually make that change to meet the curve. I look at it this way. For every person who makes a comment today, there's probably a hundred other people who didn't make the comment. They'll see this online. They won't make the comment. So that's the way I look at it. Okay. Uh, we do have a question. It, uh, the question is, who would I submit proposals on adjustments to the new Route 313? Uh, you can submit that to us. You can do it online. You can also um, email us. Uh, from the screen that you have right here today, you can email us at Fairfax uh, Connector um, at FairfaxCounty.gov, or you can go online on our survey, pick the Route 313, it goes right into Route 313, it has the, um, the route sheet, a couple of questions, and a box that you can fill in the question, your question to allow us to look at where that where that adjustment is that you would like to see, and then we can assess that. Will that adjustment actually work? Is there a left-hand turn or right-hand turn that would um, cause us to add more time to the route? Or is it actually a, ben a benefit to the route as we operate the bus? So those are the kinds of things that we need from you. And um, hopefully you can send it to us. You can send it directly to me, uh, Michael Falchow, on our email. Uh, email listed there on bullet two or directly to um, mail if you want to actually write a letter. I don't get too many of those and mostly emails, um, but you can do that too. So basically to us and we will look at your comment and see what we can do. Thank you, Michael. Uh, just wanted to uh, reiterate, uh, if there are any more questions or comments, please submit them now. Uh, you know, uh, as Michael had said, that's a good reminder that uh, the information that you have seen here will be up on our Franklin Springfield bus service review page at fairfaxconnector.com. As Michael has said, uh, you can go online and take the survey and submit your feedback for any routes that you may want to uh, note comments on. Uh, you can also email them at Fairfax Connector, uh, Fairfax Connector at fairfaxcounty.gov. You can call us at 703-339-7200, TTY number 703-339-1608, or you can send them via mail to Fairfax County Department of Transportation, Care of Transit Planning, Public Comment, 4050 Legato Road, Suite 400, Fairfax, Virginia, 22033. Uh, just a reminder that uh, a recording of this meeting will be available online and it will be posted to the Fairfax Connector Franconia Springfield bus service review page in the next day or so. Uh, if we do not have any more comments, uh, we may wrap up this meeting momentarily. So I do want to thank everyone that has joined us today. Uh, and please know that we, we are very interested in your feedback and we look forward to hearing from everyone. I just actually want to thank everyone for the opportunity um, for today. I know everyone's busy, you have your own personal lives. You're, you're trying to get around, invest in the conditions of today. So your input is important to us. Typically we would have a physical meeting where I would come out and we could talk one-to-one. -one. We wouldn't have to have uh, you typing something in and having Vincent read it. Uh, we would have one-on-one -on -one conversation with me or, or the rest of the Transit Services Division staff. And we could go over more detailed information possibly but this is uh, due to the pandemic. This is the best we can do at the moment in time. So your input online or by mail or email is crucial in the planning process. <clears throat> uh, 
If there are no more questions for this afternoon, uh, we would like to thank everyone for participating. Uh, if you know anyone who was unable to attend today's meeting or the meeting that we had on Monday, please let them know and encourage them that they should also go online, check out the materials and fill out the survey. Uh, word of mouth is very effective in helping us get the, the word out to people who may not be able to attend some of these meetings. So we do encourage you to share with your friends and your neighbors. And we do want to once again thank you for joining us this afternoon.